Hi, this is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you everything there is to know in Lightroom in 15 minutes. Now if any of you have already used Lightroom, you will know that it is a huge program and I cannot go into detail about everything in 15 minutes, but I am going to hammer through everything so you can get an overview of how this works. If you've been using Lightroom for a while, you might want to watch this because I've got loads of little tips and tricks in there that you may not have known about. Anyway, it's only 15 minutes of your time. Strap yourself in. I'm going to be talking really fast. Let's see if you can follow along with me. Here we go. So let's say this is the first time you've jumped into Lightroom. The first thing you're going to want to do is import some photos. Make sure you're in the library module and you can hit import at the bottom left here, or you can go file and you can go import photos and video or command shift I. Now inside the import, you have three different columns. Column number one is where you're importing from. Column number two is what you were importing. And column number three, three is where you are importing to. So let's say we are going to import this folder from the left hand panel. We're going to make sure every single image is selected up here. And I'm not going to rename the files, but you can do just here. I'm going to add in a keyword, which is going to be PIC, photos in color. Um, and you could add on any develop settings or anything here, but we're not going to do that today. And we're going to say, where do we want it to go? We're going to say we want this folder to go onto the desktop inside a subfolder called pick tutorial. And we can change that very easily down the side to an external hard drive or something if we want it. Now we hit import and that is going to import the photographs into Lightroom. So here we are. These are the images that were sent in, some sent in by the Photos in Color community. But let's have a look what we get inside the library module. On the left hand side, we get what are the photos we are looking at and all of the folders. So if we look here on my Macintosh HD, I just imported this folder called Pick Tutorial and here are all of the images. And if I select a different folder, you will see that I will have a different series of images like so. The middle section here gives me a view of the photos. If I double click on any one of these photos, it will bring it into be full screen. So this is the folder I'm looking at. This is the specific image I'm looking at. And this is the information on the right hand side about that image. The bottom here is the film strip of all the images which are inside this folder. Nice and simple. So let's quickly just talk about collections. Folders are where all my images are stored. Collections are basically it's a collection of images from different folders which are stored inside Lightroom, but they, they're not actually moving the raw file. So for example, if I wanted this little guy here to be in my portraits collection, I can just drag and drop him inside here. And when I come to my portraits, you will see he is over on this side. But if I was to hit delete, it's going to delete him from this portrait collection just here. So he's no longer inside this collection, as you can see, but he is still inside this folder here because you will, I'm not removing him from a folder, just a collection. To add a collection, you just hit the plus button on the side and hit create collection. Now, on the right hand side here, this is where it gives me lots of information. I can add in any more keywords just here. I can also add a preset. So this might be a preset. If I was to edit my presets, I can add all sorts of EXIF and metadata on the side just here. And the bottom here is going to give me all the information about this image. So the dimensions, the ISO, what type of camera it was shot on and things like that. So now let's look at all of the different elements inside Lightroom for editing a photo. Inside Lightroom, it is called develop. That is because it is a play on words. Lightroom, we are developing a photograph just like you would do in a darkroom. So let's have a look when we're inside the develop module. It's important to note the film strip stays exactly the same. That is because when you're inside the develop module, the only images you are able to edit is whichever folder you selected inside the library module. On the left hand side, you have two elements. Basically, you have your presets and then you have your history. That's all the different things that you've edited. So you can always step back. Let's have a quick look at the side here. The first thing we're going to have is the histogram. Now let's take a look at this image here, the histogram. As we all know, if you know how a histogram works, we have over on this side here, the blacks and the shadows 
the midtones, the highlights, and the whites. And you can actually drag the histogram around, which is going to edit the image directly. Two other things that you have are the two little triangles in the top corner. That is what's called your clippings. So if you were to take this image and say, make the image, let's just move it all the way to the blacks. Anything which is pure black is now going to turn blue because I have that turned on. Now, if I was to have this done on the other side and have this one, anything which is too bright. So let's take the image all the way to the other side. You're going to see anything which is pure white. If you look in the top corner here, it is actually going to become red. So that is your clipping, really helpful. Now, if I ever want to reset an image, I come down here and I hit reset at the bottom, which resets the image to its original state. The first thing we have is white balance. That's usually what you want to do to an image first. So let's go to an image down at the bottom here that needs some white balance treatment. You can see this here, obviously taken in tungsten light. What we're going to do is use the eyedropper tool, click on a neutral color, and we have set the white balance inside Lightroom. Really powerful. You can also go through and actually select the type of lighting that it was. For example, this was tungsten and I would select it and it would give me the correct white balance for this. I personally think the eyedropper tool is fantastic. You can also do it manually underneath using the temp and tint, tint sliders. Move it to the right and you get yellow, move it to the left and you get blue, so on and so forth. Okay, now let's jump on down to the tone. This is basically everything inside your histogram. It is not looking at color. It is only looking at the blacks, whites, highlights, and shadows. So basically, and the midtone. So that's just looking at the tone. So if we go to this image just here, we hit auto. It's going to only look at everything inside the tone section, and it's going to put an auto edit on it. I would not recommend doing this inside Lightroom. It usually overexposes images, although this one, it did really well. So. Basically, if you look at your histogram up here, you move the exposure and it's going to be moving the entire thing here. It's focusing on the middle section. The highlights is going to be moving the far right hand side and the blacks is going to be moving the far left hand side. And you can move those sliders around, editing everything which is inside your image. If you ever want to look at where you came from in an image, hit backslash, which is just underneath the delete button on your keyboard. And you can look at the before and the after massively helpful. So let's just bring this image back here. Let's do a quick edit for what I think would work. Let's lift those shadows. Okay, this looks nice. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that we need to take just a 30 second break because I'm completely out of breath before we jump back in. My name is Edward Gregory. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and definitely head over to photosincolor.com and sign up for my email list because I have a huge product launch coming out in just 15 days. Let's also quickly use her teeth to set the white balance. It's gone a little too blue, so we'll warm her back up. Nice. The next thing that we have down here is our presence. Now, basically, this, if you were to look at your clarity, a lot of new users use this a lot because it has a lot of pop to your image. In my opinion, it actually ruins an image. But if you go, if you reduce clarity, it's going to make the image very soft. Do not use this for skin softening as it will ruin your image in my opinion. Then we have vibrance and saturation. Vibrance is basically going to be looking at changing the um, colors in the midtones and the saturation is the overall color. A great tip here, lift the vibrance and reduce the saturation. Rather than lifting the saturation, it's going to give you a far more natural feel within that. Okay, so let's now look at the tone curve. The next thing down here, really powerful. This is looking at all things, including the colors. And it works independently of the top section. So the way that the tone curve works, the bottom section, we are looking at the shadows. In fact, let me just click on this button. This is what yours probably looks like. You've got your highlights, which is the top section, and your shadows, which is the bottom section and everything in between. This is not affecting any color at all. But check this out. Click the bottom button down here. And now you can go through and add all of your own points onto the tone curve and make more specific edits. And what's even more powerful is the bottom button here. You can select each one inside of its own color R G B. And if I want to get rid of any of these points, all I have to do is I can just right click and hit delete control point. Now let's look at HSL hue, saturation and luminance. For this, we're going to look at this image just here. Let me just lighten it up so we can actually take a look at the image like so. 
bring those highlights back and those shadows up. Great, so hue, saturation, luminance. Hue, that changes the actual color. So let's look at the oranges here. I can move the oranges towards the reds or the yellows. You can see it changes the color. Same with the blue skies, going to turquoise or purple. So that is the hue, the saturation. What that does, it changes the intensity of the color. So let's look at the blue in the sky, make it more blue, make it less blue. Really simple. And the luminance is how much light is going through that. So if I take the, the light out of the blue, it's going to make it darker. Add light to it, it's going to make that color lighter. But it doesn't affect the actual intensity of the color itself. This is massively powerful. Spend a lot of time learning your HSL. Now, if you select B and W up here, it turns it black and white, and it will allow you to edit each of these elements, the, the luminance within the color, although it's now in black and white. So again, really powerful there. Okay, split toning. Let's take a quick look at that. This, we're gonna look at the highlights and the shadows. So it adds color to it. Highlights, let's add some yellow to the highlights. Anything which is in the highlights is now yellow. And let's add some blue to the shadows. We're basically gonna add blue to anything shadows. This is a split toning or cross-processing effect. And the middle sli slider moves the balance from the highlights to the shadows. Really, really powerful. And backslash there, before and after. Now let's go down to the next section, which is detail. This obviously is looking at the sharpening. So let's have a look at the tree here. We're just gonna zoom in by clicking on the image and we can have a look what the sharpening is doing. The more you sharpen, the more it seems to give it more detail. Now, if I hold down option while option or alt while doing this, it turns it to black and white because it's easier to see the effects. And masking means that if it ignores the edges or it only looks at the edges, for example, so anything which is white, it is affecting anything in black, it is not. So there we go. We have now only added sharpening to the tree, not to the sky. I know that because I've got massive amounts of masking on this. And I know that by holding alt and option. Be careful pushing this around too much. You can quickly ruin an image. And that brings me on to the next section, which is noise reduction. Ever got an image with loads of noise? Well, you're gonna probably want to reduce it. So we have an image here, lots of noise. We can use noise reduction on this, but be careful. You can very quickly smudge an image and make it look really, really bad. Okay, the next thing is lens corrections. Lightroom is amazing at looking at what camera it was shot on. So if we take this image here, it's a raw image, enable profile corrections. It knew it was shot on a Canon um, 100 millimeter. So it will do a lens correction for me very quickly. Okay, so let's look at some really important things that everybody always wants to know how to do. How to do an HDR. Basically, you take three images, which are different exposures. You select all three. You're gonna right click, photo merge, and you're gonna hit HDR. The amazing thing about this is it does all of the work for you. It's like so, you hit merge and it's gonna do a wonderful job of actually building an HDR image. Now, if you wanna make a panorama, you select all of the images that what you want to make into a panorama, you go right click, photo merge and click panorama and it is going to very quickly stitch your image together and create a wonderful panorama. One thing that I would, ex I would do is use boundary warp. It's actually going to stretch the image and it is going to make it nice and level for you. Now, once you've got all of your edits done and you, are, you want to export the image, that is one of the most important things to do inside Lightroom. All you have to do is come back to the library module. You can select an image and hit export. And then you have a number of settings that you can do. I'm going to export it to my desktop. I'm going to call it a text test image. And I'm going to make the image a total of 1,000 pixels wide. There you go. And if I export on this image, we're going to see it is going to appear very quickly on my desktop at 1,000 pixels. Phew! Okay, so that is absolutely everything inside Lightroom that I think you should know in just 15 minutes. Now remember, I have a full Lightroom training course available on my channel. Go and check it out. Learn everything there is to know about Lightroom. This program is amazing and I am absolutely exhausted from doing that. Thank you so much for watching. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and breathe. Hi, this is Ed Gregory from... There is no way I can get through it in 15 minutes, but no.
Hi, this is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you 